troops, I saw a bear here. Welcome to update 53 for Foxhole. Some old vehicles are getting new models, new rifles have been added to both factions, and a ton of new features. Rebalancing rocket batteries, vehicles ammo slots, and a complete rework of the western half of the map. Vivox's large voice channel system has been added to Foxhole, which means for the first time in two years, Hello. Hello there. We will once again be allowed to have cross-faction <laughs> voice communication. It's, it's good to be able to communicate with enemies once again. Get ready to call and be called baby eaters by the opposing faction. I can't wait to try my hardest to relive one of the greatest moments I ever had on stream. Hey, I'm heading over to Abandon Ward. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm, going, I'm heading that way too. All right, good man. <laughs> he has no fucking clue. Oh my god! <laughs> Look out, Kali Lodgy. I'm coming for you. With rifles, the Colonials are bringing forth their own auto rifle in the form of the Katina RT4. It has a 10-round magazine and a moderate fire rate, with a range comparable to the Argenti. It's auto firing. But its accuracy drops really quickly. Not to be shortchanged, the Wardens are getting the number 2B Hawthorne. It is a sawed-off rifle, able to be carried in the secondary slot. It's got a shortened 8-round magazine and is bolt-action operated. Its range is less than that of the Argenti. Its accuracy is good, but takes a while to aim. And don't even think about being accurate after you start firing. That being said, in a pinch or in a trench, it's a good fit as well as being a great fit for tank commanders. Up next, we have a new class of tank, which I'm dubbing the AA tanks. That's right, armored abominations. In all seriousness though, these are rocket tanks. They're based off the scout tank and tankette chassis respectively. The Wardens come in with the King Jester Mark I-1. It's a scout tank that has had its turret removed, but has strapped six rocket tubes to its sides. Like all rocket vehicles, these have to be loaded one by one. These are high explosive rockets. It carries a driver and the gunner, which controls the rocket pods. And they'll have to most likely use a forward spotter in order to spot the fall of the rounds. The Colonials respond with the T-13 Dionysus Rocket Battery. Built on top of a tankette chassis, it carries nine rocket tubes strapped to its back in place of its turret. The T-13's rockets are incendiary rockets, making this the first Colonial vehicle that can carry incendiaries. Also note that Colonials can now produce incendiary rockets at their facilities. It's got a driver, and a gunner, which also still doubles as the tank commander, so they could spot from this vehicle, though likely they can't spot the fall of the rockets, given the extended rocket range this update. Despite their debatable appearances, these vehicles do serve a vital function, making the tankette and scout tank chassis more viable in later war scenarios. In addition to explosive and fire rockets being producible by both factions, the 3C high explosive rocket has had its damage increased by 16%. Travel time for rockets have also been delayed. For each 100 meters a rocket travels, the time to land is increased by 3 seconds. All the previous rocket platforms have had their ranges increased. The Riker 4-3-F Wasp Nest now has a range of between 200 and 300 meters. The Niska Riker Mark 9 Skycaller now has a range of 200 to 270 meters. The DAE 3B-2 Hades Net has 200 to 425 meters. And the R-17 Retarius Skirmisher has a range of 200 to 350 meters. Other balance changes include the Devitt Ironhide Mark IV has had its disable threshold reduced from 30% down to 20%. The Lance 25 Hosta minimum penetration chance has been reduced from 22 down to 20%. The Silverhand Lord Scar Mark X has had its cost increase from 35 to 50 steel construction material. 
A low velocity modifier has been added of 31%. The gunner's vision has been extended by 4 meters to be more in line with other open top combat vehicles. Oh, and Colonial Rifles can no longer equip the Osprey Grenade Launcher Attachment. 94.5mm Subsistent Disable Bonus has decreased by 50%, so you're less likely to get instantly tracked or instantly turreted by 94.5mm. The Katara Model 2 has had a low velocity modifier added of 34%, and its stability cost per shot has been increased by 37.5%. The BMS Holdout can now mount a tripod weapon on either side of its train car. Storm Cannons and Intelligence Centers leave a Tier 3 Bunker Husk when they get destroyed. BMS Mindseeker Assembly Speed Bonus only applies if the vehicle is assembling from a facility building, so you can't use these things to quick pull items from town halls anymore. That being said, the devs have added an assembly speed bonus for items and items crates. Players that have not assembled items recently will see a notable increase in their assembly speed. So when you're assembling items, the duration will initially be faster. As items are assembled in quick succession, the duration will increase up to a maximum that is equal to their normal duration. The speed bonus will replenish over time. If a storm cannon is firing across regions, the receiving end will now be able to hear the storm cannon. BMS Overseer Skyhauler can now deploy and undeploy in four directions to reduce its deployment time. The BMS Foreman Stacker now has a minimum placement distance of 10 meters between one another. And 250 millimeter vehicles now enforce a maximum firing angle. Finally! This bleeds into the balance changes, but now all vehicles and field weapons have dedicated ammo slots. Ammo slots also apply to things like emplaced guns and tripod mounted weapons. And these ammo slots will limit the vehicles so that you can't, in most cases, stack ammo all the way up to 100. Usually it'll be around 20 to 30, depending on the vehicle type. This also means that the inventory slots for each vehicle has been changed around to accommodate this new mechanic. I'm not going to read out the entire list, however I will throw them up on screen in a brief overview. So pause if you have any sections or vehicle types you'd like to get a better look at. Here we go. Let's be real though, tanks don't need to carry a hundred shells at a time. Although some of these ammo slots are a bit more limiting. That being said, vehicles such as the basic machine gun tankette still carry several inventory slots on top of their ammo slot, so they become far more specialized as universal equipment carriers. One other nice thing about this change is the fact that you can't confuse which ammo type will go in which vehicle or weapon now. You can only place the appropriate ammo in the appropriate gun. There have been several map changes this update, and many of them point towards the future naval update. In Callahan's Passage, Deadlands, Marban Hollow, and Umbral Wildwood, they've all had various rivers widened. In Heartlands, pre-placed tracks have been removed from the gaps in the bulwark. In Weathered Expanse, 
Some of the old tank assets in the frozen wastelands have been updated to reflect newer model tanks. In Morgan's Crossing, a storage depot was added to Lividus. And uh, uh, something something else is different about this map. I can't uh, I can't quite seem to remember. Oh, that's right. The entire west coast of the map has been completely reworked. Both the island maps of Orebreaker Isles and Fisherman's Row have been axed from Foxhole, at least for now. Baranac Coast and Westgate are now the extreme most western regions. Two brand new regions are now in the old places where Baranac Coast and Westgate used to be. These regions are King's Cage, with its centerpiece being a town that spans multiple tiers of cliffs in the center, and Sableport, south of it, whose primary feature is more fortress towns similar to the Blemish along the Bulwark. The regions surrounding these two new regions, such as Origin, Ashfields, Heartlands, Lockmore, Linna Mercy, Stone Cradle, Nevish Line, and the repositions Farinac Coast and Westgate all had their borders that meet with these new regions changed or shifted around to reflect the new world layout. This is huge. I honestly was not expecting such a big shift with the maps around this far into the game's history. It makes me wonder what's coming in the naval update and what the East Coast regions will look like. Additionally for the map, you can open up the map when you're assembling or packaging items. Shift left clicking on a map filter icon toggles all the other icons off, allowing you to focus on one type of icon at a time. Some other changes include the menu faction selection screens have been nicely updated. A pop-up will now appear during the resistance phase on login to provide more information on the start of the next war. Toggle aim is now supported in the options menu. Warden and Colonial Small Arms now have unique wood textures to better distinguish the weapons. Several sound effects can now be heard by all local players and not just the player performing the action. Sub icons for items are now displayed in the engineering center. Coal refineries now have a new animation when they're active. Fire truck gunner positions now have a unique reload animation. Power line descriptions now mention that it can be connected to facility buildings. Stationary harvesters now have a consistent description. Fuel containers and oil tankers tooltips now mention that they can be used as a fuel source. Reservation button tooltips have been updated to better explain what they impact. All small arm weapons have had their ejected shell casings updated. Colonial tripod weapons have had their visuals unified. AFK kick timers in vehicles are now refreshed when you aim, rotate, repair, or reload the vehicle. Foundation tracks now show must be built on foundations when attempting to build on regular ground instead of surface not suitable. Many tank models now have underbellies on their models. Train bridges now use the pre-placed track visuals. Attempting to build a vehicle being constructed by an assembly station now returns this is built automatically. Callouts are now localized to a user based on their selected language. Weapon tooltips updated to show if a weapon can have an attachment on them. The maintenance tunnel now has a defense intel icon. The BMS pack mule, flatbed, universal assembly rig, and fabricator headlights now turn on. Small train car passenger positions renamed from gunner to loader. Repairing your vehicle as an engineer with fewer than five basic materials, but no more than zero, now communicates no materials when attempted. Assembly of shippable crates now resets the reserve stockpile expiration timer. And the crude oil fields have now simply been renamed to oil fields. Structure event logs and stockpile action logs have been updated. Maintenance tunnels and placements and placement houses and superstructures such as storm cannons or intelligence structures now have structure event logs for when someone changes the setting on maintenance tunnels, entering and exiting emplacements and superstructures, and for firing emplacements or superstructures. So you can better keep track of who's using your heavy equipment. As for the stockpiles, a log has been added for the transfer to and from stockpiles, Packaging a structure with a stockpile action log no longer resets the log. The 
tooltip for stockpile actions has been updated. Material pallets, material factories, and both assembly stations now have stockpile action logs. There's a submission log entry when you submit large items with the V hotkey. Events of the same type in logs will now merge with each other to reduce spam if appropriate. Using shippable containers for factory and refinery orders now produces a log as well. And new entries to the action logs are now at the top of the log to be consistent with other log categories. Oh, and one last hint for the future naval update. Splashes have been added into Foxhole when 120 and 150 millimeter rounds hit water surfaces. I'll check this one off my naval suggestions update video list. There were some bug fixes along with this update, but I'll leave that for the patch notes down below. Thanks for tuning into this update. So what do you troops think? The updated rocket tankette and rocket scout tank will make them more viable late game? And if so, what other earlier game vehicles would you like to see have a later model to make them more relevant? Post a comment down below. And remember, if you haven't seen, I released part one and part two of Operation Sundial, which was a massive operation I helped take part in in War 102. So check those videos out if you haven't already. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, and stay in your foxholes. Bear out.